Hello and welcome to the Psalm a Day Daily Devotion with me, Pastor Chris Mathis, from Epiphany Lutheran Church in Castle Rock, Colorado. Today our psalm is Psalm 9, and we read in the English Standard Version. To the choir master, according to Muth Laban, a psalm of David, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they stumble and perish before your presence, for you have maintained my just cause. You have sat on the throne giving righteous judgment. You have rebuked the nations. You made the wicked perish. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. The enemy came to an end in everlasting ruins. Their, city, their cities you rooted out. The very memory of them has perished. But the Lord sits enthroned forever. He has established his throne for justice, and he judges the world with righteousness. He judges the peoples with uprightness. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord, who sits enthroned in Zion. Tell among the peoples his deeds. For he who avenges blood is mindful of them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Be gracious to me, O Lord. See my affliction from those who hate me. O you who lift me up from the gates of death, that I may recount all your praises that in the gates of the daughter of Zion I may rejoice in your salvation. The nations have sunk in the pit that they made, in the net that they hid their own foot has been caught. The Lord has made himself known. He has executed judgment. The wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. The wicked shall return to Sheol, all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. Put them in fear, O Lord. Let the nations know that they are but men. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This is a psalm of thanksgiving in which David uh, praises God for defeating his enemies, which in this case are not personal enemies, as in some of the other psalms, but national enemies of the people of God, the people of Israel. Israel had many enemies throughout its history. One thinks of Egypt, the Philistines, who are probably the ones in view here, uh, the Philistines against who who um, exercised so much uh, domination over the Israelites during the period of the judges and the kings until David arose and defeated them. The Philistines, by the way, were known as the Sea Peoples or the Phoenicians is another way you may have heard that before. Perhaps the most famous of their settlements was Carthage. But other enemies of historic enemies of Israel were Assyria, Babylon, Persia, the Greeks, the Romans, and of course um, the the hatred of uh, the people of God has uh, continued as Israel, the new Israel of the Church, uh, made up of both Jews and Gentiles who believe in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord and confess him to be Messiah. One thinks of the church's enemies such as uh, of course the Romans again, um, Islam and communism, communists, as well as uh, the Nazis and other groups throughout history. And what we need to remember, what we take comfort in as God's people, is that no matter what enemies of religion or state rise up against the church, against 
new Israel, true Israel, um, they cannot defeat us. They may be able to deprive us of life, limb, property, but they cannot take from us our salvation, and they are unable ultimately to withstand against God. But we're told that they will be caught in the net that they have laid for us. They will sink in the pit that they have dug for us. And indeed, in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, we see how Christ defeats all the nations that array themselves against Jesus and his church. And their flesh becomes a feast for the carrion birds of the sky. So, no matter how hard-pressed, no matter how apparently defeated the church may be, the church cannot lose on a timeline that runs to eternity because Christ wins and Christ has won. As it says in our famous Reformation hymn of Mighty Forgers, the devil is judged, the deed is done, and one little word can fell him. And as we hear in another verse, um, Jesus holds the field forever. And so uh, the kingdom ours remaineth. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day and we'll be in touch soon.